after this. We're interrupting that report to take you live to the Sri Lankan capital where we are about to hear from the Deputy Defence Minister about Sunday's attacks. Let's listen in. For this uh, special press briefing, uh, mainly shared by Honorable Rohan Vijayvardhana, Minister of Mass Media and State, Minister of Defence, and Mr. Uh, Rohan, uh, he, he's a uh, police force person, superintendent of police. And we are also having uh, Sumi, uh, Brigadier Sumit Atapattu, he is an uh, army spokesperson. By introducing the head table, uh, let me invite Honorable Minister to uh, make his statement. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, please let me apologize for the delay in uh, starting this press conference. Uh, and I also, I think I know some of you journalists are waiting to go to see what has happened in Vallavatta today. Uh, it is not a blast. It is, uh, I think, a special task force group had detected a motorbike, uh, a suspicious motorbike, and they had gone up to the bike. They had, uh, I think, tried to open the seat, if I'm not mistaken, and because it had been stuck, they had decided to have a controlled blast. So it is not... Uh, uh, a bomb. Uh, it's just that it was a suspicious motorbike that when and special task force got the bomb disposal to come and do a control blast in there. Uh, uh, right now, I think a death toll from so the mic's on. The death toll has risen up to 359, uh, which, out of which 39 are foreign nationals. Uh, 17 bodies have been identified of the foreigners and have been released to their families. Uh, the investigation is still being conducted by our forces and uh, our intelligence agencies. Uh, we have made a significant amount of arrests. Uh, we are gathering information about uh, you know, who have been involved in these uh, uh, atrocities plus any other extremist elements in this country. Uh, so we are at the moment gathering all that uh, information and we have taken, I think we are, uh, it, our investigations have come, uh, have gathered quite a lot of info, um, well, uh, intel on this and uh, we will be making further arrests in the next couple of uh, days. Uh, and we um, can firmly say that within the next couple of days that uh, our uh, security agencies will have the whole situation of this country under control. Um, so I'm happy to say that uh, um, that, that, that will be the case uh, in a couple of days. Uh, if there are any questions that you need to ask me, please do so. Uh, our, our police spokesperson is also here and the military uh, spokesperson is also here. So if there are any questions you all need to ask, please do so. Minister is, there, Minister, is there any information about the leader of this uh, national Jamaat, uh, Taufid uh, Jamaat? Uh, what has happened to the leader? Do you have any information whether he has committed suicide or uh, what about his whereabouts? Uh, right now, the, there are, uh, I think this group has been, uh, there are two groups. Uh, it, uh, from what we gathered, the national Taufid Jamaat, I think there has been a, a group that has split from that main body. And uh, uh, there is, they have, uh, uh, basically that is the group that has become quite extreme and, and from what we have gathered is that uh, they are thinking is that uh, only Islam can, uh, can be the only religion in this country. Um, so that, that has been their extreme view and which is why they have carried out these atrocities, these uh, bombings. Um, but uh, we believe that the, the leader of this group has also committed suicide in one of the attacks. Uh, sorry? The ones, uh, the split. Uh, it, no, we're, right now I'm restricted in saying the name of that group. Uh, but as soon as... Uh, as so, soon as we speak with the intelligence groups and everything, and once Minister, just, just, for, just for clarity, so it's not, it's not the NTJ leader who has uh, committed suicide, but it's somebody from the splinter group. It is a splinter group, yes. So not the NTJ, N Zara N Hashmi is 
We don't know what has happened to Zara and Hashmi. Uh, no, the, it is a splinter group. It is a splinter group, but there are uh, both both groups have extreme views, but they've had uh, they've had some kind of misunderstanding, and there had been a split at some point. So, but if there's a split, did they work together on this operation, or how? well, there have been links. Yes. Uh, at the Shangri-La. What's his name, sir? Uh, I'm sorry, I've, I'm restricted in giving out that name at the moment. Is he the son of Mr. Ibrahim, the spice trader? Is he uh, uh, is he is he no, no, he's not. He's not now? He's not. Is he the factory owner? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Silo, the, there were two, two bombers at the Shangri-La, right? Yes, uh, it's, it's right now, uh, we do not want to... I, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I am restricted in giving out uh, the identities of these people uh, because we are still conducting the investigations, and, and until everything is finished, I, you know, I, I cannot give out these names. But, the but Minister, the, the, in, in the reports we have seen, there are the name of Zaran Hashmi, who was described as the leader of the uh, National Tawfiq Jamaat. So, the, what we really want to know is what has happened to him. Look, I cannot give out the names of the persons, but uh, uh, the, uh, I can only say that the leader of this, the, the person who gave the lead to this uh, attack is one of the suicide bombers and he has taken his life. Sorry, can you just be a bit clearer? Your Prime Minister said yesterday specifically about this um, Zahran Hashim um, that he thought that he had committed suicide, he'd been one of the suicide bombers, but that hadn't been confirmed yet. Are you, I know you're, you're obviously restricted, but can you just say you're, you're talking about the same person? Well, there is a group, um, uh, and there are quite a few individuals, and out of that, uh, from this group, the leader of this group has committed suicide in, at the Shangri-La Hotel. Uh, uh, but what we are conducting investigations is to find out whether there are other people who are involved in this, in this group. It is just not restricted to the, the, to the bombers. So there are, uh, I have to find out how many others are involved in this. So those investigations are going on, so which is why... I... But are you saying that this Zahan Hashim person was the leader of this splinter group? I'm not saying that at the moment. Oh, right, OK. So it's a bit confusing. And can you also say how many of these... Um, the suicide bombers. We've obviously seen pictures of them um, in the AMAC video that was released yesterday. Do you, what credibility do you attach to that video? And can you give a sense of, um, did Islamic State, they're claiming responsibility for the attack, did they train these people? Was the coordination, who was the mastermind of this attack? Is it a foreigner? Uh, we are conducting those investigations at the moment to see if there is a direct link to any international organizations. Right now, the IS has, uh, has claimed responsibility, uh, but I can say just through ideology and maybe funding, but on the funding part, we are conducting investigations to find out whether there was direct funding. Uh, but what also I can say is that this group um, of some of the suicide bombers, most of them are well educated um, and come from maybe middle or upper middle class. So they are financially quite independent and quite, uh, you know, their families are quite stable financially. Uh, so that is a worrying uh, factor in this because um, some of them have, I think, uh, studied uh, well, in uh, various other countries. They hold degrees, some um, LLMs, you know, there's quite well, well educated people. You said, I think you said yesterday that one of them had been to the UK. Can you confirm? Is that correct? Um, we believe that uh, one of the suicide bombers studied in the UK and then maybe later on did his postgraduate uh, in Australia before coming back to settle in Sri Lanka. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry? Can you... No, no, no foreign... Sorry, but so could you say that bombers travelled to Syria and Iraq and returned? We are still looking into that. But uh, right now, we don't have any uh, uh, in indication of that. Minister, Minister did, uh, you said uh, yesterday that uh, the bombings were in retaliation to Christchurch bombings. Is here, Minister. Sorry, sorry. I'm here. 
this oh. side. Here. Oh, right. Good. Uh, you said uh, you came. You, you told Parliament yesterday the bombings were in retaliation to Christchurch bombings. Uh, do we have any concrete uh, evidence to say that? Uh, this is according to an assessment done by the intelligence that uh, they believe that this uh, is a reprisal. Um, uh, it was basically motivated that the Christchurch incident motivated these guys to carry out these blasts on Easter Sunday. Uh, because this group has first, uh, I think, a couple of months ago in the Kegol district had uh, defaced a few uh, Buddhist statues and attacked some temples and a, and, and a church as well. But they were very, you know, it was not to this magnitude. They were just uh, uh, small, uh, uh, you know, attacks. Uh, um, but for them to take take this kind of action on Easter Sunday, uh, our intelligence services believe that they were motivated by the Christchurch incident. So, but the New Zealand Prime Minister is saying Sir, that uh, there is no intelligence. Is question. What is that assessment based on? Do they have uh, messages from the group? Uh, what is the intelligence like assessment I said, based on? They are, they are, they are, the intelligence services are doing their in investigations and all, and according to their assessment, is uh, they believe that this was a motivation, you know, but do they it have was motivating, mo a motivational factor for these people. Do they have messages or wiretaps? I, or? I, I, I cannot uh, indulge that, uh, okay. that kind of information. Minister, is uh, Mr. Ibrahim the owner, said to be the owner of the Demitagoda house? Is he under interrogation? Uh, what is the status of? He is under, um, he is taken into custody and they are questioning him at the moment, yes. Hi, sir. I'm Sadhan from Beyond. Uh, my question is, India had provided intelligence earlier. Uh, have other countries, including India, provided more intelligence now of another series of attacks? Have you been brief, uh, briefed up by other countries? Well, our intelligence agencies have uh, links with many intelligence agencies from other countries. So I think there has been uh, you know, information that has been flowing from many sources. Uh, but yes, uh, there has been, as I said in my speech yesterday, they have had, our intelligence had been briefed. Uh, and uh, certain officials have been notified about the possible attack, but uh, uh, due to some, you know, uh, the lapse of, uh, you know, security arrangements, uh, most of the officials were not notified. Uh, that is including me. And the prime minister was not uh, notified about these threats. Uh, which is very unfortunate, and so uh, there, there has been a lapse in, uh, in that regard, but uh, the, the president uh, has come back and he has promised to take a, you know, and put an inquiry into this, to why there had been a lapse of, uh, about the sharing of information amongst everyone. We have, we, have heard, we have heard that the Nagombo bomber moved into a house by the church um, one month ago. So is the intelligence suggesting that one week after the Christchurch shootings, this terror cell mobilized? It was that short a notice. There was one week passed, they mobilized, and then one month later were ready to carry out these attacks. Well, it's, uh, what we have found out is that there have been two safe houses, one in Nigambo and one in Panadura. Uh, and that, so it had been easy for them to plan out these attacks. So Sri Lanka is not a vast country. I mean, uh, I think, I believe this group has been, uh, you know, at some point thinking of making some kind of attack, but I believe uh, according to the agencies that uh, the Christchurch incident would have motivated them to, you know, carry it out on Easter Sunday. I have two questions. Um, sorry, right now they are conducting investigations on that. Week. It is, yes, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't, uh, I'm restricted in saying this uh, because the, the investigations are still carried out on this. Uh, mm, I'm not too sure exactly when it was splintered, but uh, it's, you know, it, They've, they've been linked with various groups. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, uh, 
No, I, I cannot confidently say exactly when this, this group had been, you know, uh, what steps are you taking to control Islamic fundamentalism? The Prime Minister uh, has said that there are no links and there's no intelligence reports that they have suggesting that uh, the attacks are connected to Christchurch. So she's actually come out and uh, rejected the claims made by Sri Lanka. Secondly, has India provided intelligence uh, for yet another attack that has been planned here in Sri Lanka? Um, for the first question, I think, uh, like I said, according to the assessment made by our intelligence services, th you know, th this is what they believe, that it was motivated. Uh, as whether there was direct links, uh, I mean, is not, I, I mean, I don't believe there was a direct link in the sense there was anyone from New Zealand giving, uh, you know, financial, uh, you know, benefits or motivate. Uh, uh, training or anything like that, but I think what happened in New Zealand motivated these people to carry it out on Easter Sunday. Minister Pradeep Pillai from Network 18 India. Yes, you have accepted the fact that there has been an intelligence failure. There has been reports of multiple intelligence inputs, including that from India, about even more specifically that attacks would be made at the church. Now the top leadership of the state, the political leadership says that they were not uh, in the loop, and they were not in the know about this. And does this point at a very serious lapse at the intelligence? And are we looking at a major shakeup at the top brass of the army, the police, the intelligence? Um, there, it is a major lapse. It is a major lapse uh, in uh, uh, sharing of information, especially intelligence information. Uh, as for our shakeup, the president yesterday made a statement saying that uh, uh, that uh, there will be certain changes done in the hierarchy whether it's the military or whether it's in the ministry or is it left to be seen. I think I'm sure within the next couple of days we'll, we'll find out. Uh, but the, the president is planning to make some changes, yes. Coming back to the IS factor, Minister, uh, just like uh, Christchurch, do, is, it, is it an assessment by the uh, intelligence agencies that it, it is only a motivational or possible funding or it's there is evidence to suggest that no we are still conducting investigations on if the possible international links um, right now what I can safely say is with, when with the IS is that uh, it has been motivational and we are checking whether there has been funding uh, as the training side as well we are still making those investigations Minister, Sir, Minister uh, several uh, <laughs> sorry minister this side sorry, I, I think he's the uh, well, we, we are asking the people to be vigilant. We are asking the people to be vigilant. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that the country has, is 100% uh, at the moment, uh, but uh, there are still, you know, there could be still a few people out there. But uh, uh, right now we are asking people to be vigilant, and uh, and but I think, Within a couple of days, within a few next few days, we will have the situation totally under control. What steps are you taking? Sorry. What steps are you taking to control Islamic fundamentalism, sir? Because Sorry. that is the basis of all this. And connected to that, I would like Sorry, to I... ask. Uh, connected to that. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. There have been reports that uh, India gave a warning about these attacks even on the day. Uh, on Easter Sunday morning. Do you know anything about how that information was transmitted? Was it a phone call? Did it come through to somebody? Uh, sorry, I'm not, uh, I'm not privy to that information at the moment. I, I think, uh, like I said, the intelligence services have uh, links to various other intelligence services around, uh, international services as well. So there has been, uh, I think, uh, uh, a sharing of information. But whether it was given on that particular day or the day before, I'm, I'm not, I, I cannot actually say that at the moment. Sorry. Minister, uh, what was the... What it, total of eight. Minister. Yeah, mainly, uh, investigations are being conducted by Criminal Investigation Department, uh, CID. CID uh, confirmed uh, nine uh, suicide carders involved uh, this uh, bomb blast hmm? and out of nine 
CID has identified eight uh, suicide carders. So, have Minister, carders what is the origin of which? Excuse me. <laughs> what, has, so we have been listening there to a news conference from the uh, Sri Lankan Deputy Defence Minister, Ruan Vijaywadna. He's accompanied by army and police spokespeople giving an update on the situation in Sri Lanka and taking a lot of questions from journalists again about how this could have happened, how these attacks could have been carried out given that there was intelligence. Our correspondent, Manal Fernandez, has been listening in. She's joining us live from Colombo. So more information there, Manal, about a possible splinter group involved and their leader being one of the suicide bombers. We've just heard from one of the government spokespeople saying they believe there were nine suicide bombers involved. That's right. The State Minister of Defence, Ruan Vijay Wodhana, saying that the uh, sort of investigative arm of the police, the Criminal Investigation Department, uh, having confirmed there were nine suicide bombers, out of which eight have been identified so far. The minister declined to actually reveal the identities uh, of the suicide bombers. Uh, he said uh, there were many lines of investigation where he said he was restricted uh, in giving out information, but he did take a lot of questions. One of the things he pointed to was that all the suicide bombers who had been involved in those attacks, uh, he said many of them came from uh, middle-class affluent families and most of them were very well educated. He talked of some of them having been overseas, uh, one to UK uh, for graduate study, for for degree studies and then to Australia for postgraduate studies. And he said that was a significant and a worrying fact mm -hmm. that uh, all of these very well-educated uh, people from highly affluent middle-class families, but in general giving uh, a feel of the investigations as they go so far. And Manel, he also said no foreigners have been arrested and answered questions about that ISIL claim of responsibility, saying that it is something that they are investigating. That's right. There has been uh, some speculation, there have been some uh, uh, reports uh, given uh, and attributed to certain sources to say that there are some foreigners that are being questioned, but the minister has denied that. Uh, and the investigations are looking at that link uh, between the ISIL claim uh, that they did conduct it, but he did say it might be the motivation and uh, some sort of uh, spurring on of this local group. Manal, thank you very much for that. For now, that's Manal Fernandez. She's live for us in the Sri Lankan capital, Colombo. And just to bring you once again the latest from the Sri Lankan government news conference, where we've heard again the death toll has risen to 359, 39 of whom are foreign nationals, 17 of those foreigners have been identified and their bodies have been released to families. They believe there were nine suicide bombers involved in Sunday's attacks.